Hello. Welcome back to the series where I play some of the hottest NFT and cryptocurrency games and review them from the perspective of a gamer. As a reminder, I'm reviewing all of these games primarily on how well they appeal to the general gamer population, particularly those without an interest in cryptocurrency. It seems that every week a new game is announced to have cryptocurrency integration. So let's take a look at them to see how well they stand up compared to their traditional counterparts. It's hard to believe we are already on the third episode of this series and have yet to actually play a single game. My original plan for this episode was to play Axie Infinity, but unfortunately the game was down for maintenance. Regardless, there are still plenty more games for us to try in this series, so we'll move right on to the next game, Decentraland. Decentraland is described as a 3D virtual world browser-based platform. Users may buy virtual plots of land in the platform as NFTs via the MANA cryptocurrency, which uses the Ethereum blockchain. It was first opened to the public in February 2020 and is overseen by the nonprofit Decentraland Foundation. Due to an extreme interest in NFTs and crypto around the time of Decentraland's initial announcement, the game gathered an immense sum of 26 million US dollars in initial funding in 2017. In 2021, the cheapest plot of land in Decentraland was 6,000 US dollars. The largest purchase for land was almost 2.5 million dollars. With figures like that, Decentraland smashes the sales records of some of the most critically acclaimed indie titles released this decade. Now, visiting the Decentraland website, I'm immediately able to jump in and play using my MetaMask wallet. This is a really cool feature. There's no need to download or install anything. You just click play and launch the game right in your browser. In this case, cryptocurrency wallet integration is being used like a single sign-on token. Of course, if your wallet is hacked, the hacker now has complete control over your account, and there's nothing that you can do about it. This is an inherent flaw in blockchain gaming. And at this time, I have yet to see someone propose a solution to this issue. After clicking play, I proceed to create my avatar within the metaverse. Sadly, there's quite a limited amount of clothing to choose from. It appears that many of the clothes are body specific, with feminine and masculine clothes being their own separate categories. Now, there is a good variety of face and hair customization options, but of course there's no hats available for free. Hats are never free. After confirming my character customization and accepting a lengthy terms and conditions document, I'm placed directly into the metaverse of Decentraland. Now, the name Decentraland was chosen for a reason, believe it or not. Crypto is what's called a decentralized economy, one that does not rely on a single central entity like a government-backed treasury to operate. Being an open source project with a decentralized goal, the development and direction of the project is handled primarily by the Decentraland group. The Decentraland Group is what's called a DAO, or a Decentralized Autonomous Organization. As explained on Decentraland's website, the tokens needed to be a member of this DAO are mana, names, and land. By holding any of these tokens, you may create and vote in proposals, and then your vote on the proposal is weighted according to the balance of the appropriate tokens in your account. Taking a look through some of the proposals, I found them all to be rather basic features that seem overly bureaucratic to vote on. In my opinion, this is a massive flaw. Online worlds need to quickly adapt to changes in the meta, fix bugs, and remove exploits. Having to vote on every change may seem like a very fair system in theory, but absolutely not in practice. Members of the DAO may cast one vote per token they hold, so therefore, the wealthiest members always control the majority vote. One of the proposals that I encountered while researching this DAO was one to ban the use of the player name Hitler. It had been rejected. Jumping back to the game, I first spawn in in Genesis Plaza, the center of Decentraland. A brief tutorial introduces me to the controls, the UI, and other basic features. Now, this tutorial definitely leaves a lot to be desired, as after only 45 seconds, I'm let loose to explore the metaverse with nothing more than my imagination to be my guide. For this being the heart of the city, it sure is quiet. It appears that everyone else in town's AFK. Well, regardless, I'm ready to play some games, so I walk over to a large sign and head to a game called Fruit Catcher. In Decentraland, players can create and host their own worlds in a similar fashion to Roblox, VR Chat, or Second Life. I can then bring my avatar to the worlds to play the games that the users have created. As soon as I teleport to the Fruit Catcher world, the first thing I notice is how ridiculously loud this game is. It appears that the Decentraland client is using positional audio for all audio, including the music. the camera causes the sound to flip rapidly between the left and right ears, which is not only disorienting, 
but a horrible design choice. Ignoring this issue for now, I move over to the basket to begin the game, and after a few tries, it finally starts. After failing to catch the fruits and losing all three of my lives, I want to try again. Well, unfortunately, there's no way to retry. While I stroll the fields immediately adjacent to this plot of land, I can't help but notice just how horrific this game's performance is. Now, I have a rather powerful PC, and this game by no means has good graphics, yet it still somehow struggles to maintain 30 FPS. Additionally, plots of land take a really long time to load in, which makes the game feel like it has maybe a 5 or 6 foot render distance in front of you. At one point as I'm walking around, I receive a sudden pop-up asking me to register to receive what's called a free Kayari. Um, I don't know what that is, it wasn't explained, it's just asking me for my email, so certainly not going to be giving them my email here. Continuing on my journey under the night sky, I run into a massive green glowing wall that's completely impassable. No matter what I do, my movement's blocked by the wall. Unlike all the other walls that I had seen before, this one doesn't disappear after just a few seconds of waiting. Turning around, I notice that the rest of the world has completely unloaded, leaving nothing but an endless void in my wake. At this point, I'm completely lost, so I go ahead and open the menu and decide to check out some of the other worlds that the Central Land has to offer. Here in this menu, I can view the player counts of each individual world. I can't help but notice just how empty this game is. Fewer than 10 of the worlds have even more than single digit player counts, with a vast majority of them being completely empty. Now, I already knew that this game had a player count issue. I remember seeing an article a few months ago claiming that Decentraland only had 38 daily active users. Of course, Decentraland themselves went to debunk this claim, saying that it was using bad data. However, they failed to provide a player count themselves. Given the amount of money that's been poured into the Decentraland ecosystem, it can be said quite confidently that more money does not equal more popularity. Based on our previous research in the last two videos in the series, this is no surprise. Some of these projects have already raised millions of dollars in funding with nothing more to show than a white paper, and at least Decentraland has something that I can play right now. At this point, I'm ready to go to the next world, so I choose the first one that I find, and the only one that I find, that has a three-digit player count. Ice Poker. Rather quickly, I'm whisked away, teleported into a world populated by Pepe the Frog NPCs and a couple other players standing around many poker tables. The load times for teleporting are actually not too bad at all. It only took a few seconds to get here from the other side of the world. This makes me wonder though, how is the value of land in Decentraland determined? Plots closer to the city center seem to be more expensive, but that doesn't make any sense. You can freely teleport anywhere you want, and in fact, walking around is impossible because of those giant green walls that prevent movement through certain plots. As usual, I nearly jump out of my chair as the music kicks in at a volume loud enough to give you a concussion. This game is clearly struggling, as even the music seems to be affected by the poor frame rate. A message appears on my screen. Welcome to free to play, play and earn, ice poker. Play poker for free, earn real cash. Just three simple steps. Get a wearable, play the free poker, and earn ice. Whatever that is. After walking up to some tables, I'm given that same prompt again, asking me to buy an ice wearable. Even in the metaverse, I'm being shamed for being poor. Well, I guess I'll just get one of the wearables. It should be free, since this is free to play, play to earn poker, right? Of course it's not. The cheapest wearable is an NFT for 250 US dollars. I decide to ask for help in the chat, hoping that a fellow Decentralander will assist me in finding another way to play. I wander around for a bit while I wait for a response, and encounter this gentleman with a name that's just a racial slur. I guess the vote to ban this name was rejected. A few moments later, I learn from a kind member in the room that I must either purchase that $250 shirt, or find someone labeled a delegator. I haven't heard of a delegator, so I ask him what a delegator is. I have to go find one myself on the Discord, apparently. Now the game does nothing to explain how to find a delegator, nor does it mention which Discord to join. I ask him if he has a jack that I can borrow. He does not. Clearly I'm far too much of a peasant to be allowed in this poker room, so time to move on. Now it's not uncommon for a free-to-play game to have an area locked behind a premium purchase, but $250 just to play poker? That's beyond ridiculous. I'm assuming at this point by free-to-play poker, they actually mean you can't gamble. Who in their right mind would pay $250 to play any game, let alone a no-gambling poker game? The next stop on my Decentraland tour is going to be a world called Dice Masters, and this is one of the more populated worlds, with a player count of 7. After loading in, I'm given no prompt, no instructions, nothing. Go ahead, figure out how to play, idiot. I decide to talk to a woman outside the castle. She enthusiastically greets me with the following message. Welcome to Dice Masters, a P2ERPG in Decentraland. 
complete quest, clear dungeons, farm resources, and gather meat to craft items. Most importantly, have fun with your friends. Now, I respect my friends and would never allow them to play Decentraland, so I'm going to enjoy this game by myself today. Heading into the castle, the king presents me with one of the aforementioned quests. He orders me to find a man named Callan Kreis. I gladly accept his challenge, and in a flash, his model disappears. What? Nothing else happens. There's no instructions, directions, nor an indication that I've even picked up a quest. I frantically click all of the different UI buttons. None of them help. There's no quest log, just this list of vague instructions. As confused as ever, I just walk into a random building and click on a bookshelf. This is what happens. Hi, I'm Sango, and I've been making wearables to Decentraland since the community wearable update. And I'm also a curator on the Decentraland wearable committee. In this series, I'll be going through this entire process of making wearables, from downloading the base mesh and modeling, through to texturing, weighting, testing, and publishing. In this third video, I'll be going through the setup. That's basically just downloading Blender in the base mesh, both of which are completely free, but you will need to pay attention when we import At this point, I am just in shock. I cannot believe that this is a real game. The terrible performance, a render distance of 4 meters, a complete lack of instruction. This is nothing more than an insult to gaming as an art form than anything else. I'm sick to my stomach. But you want to see more, don't you? And besides, I told myself I would give each one of these games at an absolute minimum one hour before giving up. In the end, you only have a few minutes to grab someone's attention, as there's hundreds of new games being released every day. Every second counts when it comes to how you present your game to the player. And Decentraland wastes no time in presenting itself as an absolute mess. That being said, I said we'd do an hour, so let's do an hour. The next world that I visit is one called Wilderness P2E that only has three players online. As soon as I spawn in, this gentleman here asks me if I'm new. I find it an odd design choice that you have to type your reply to an NPC, but this is the future of gaming after all. I type yes, press enter. Nothing happens. The window then disappears. Confused as ever, I walk around the world taking in the beautiful scenery of the wilderness. Speaking again to the man who greeted me does absolutely nothing. He wants nothing to do with a commoner like me, of course. I head into a nearby portal with a yellow arrow above it and immediately dropped from the heavens, landing as a completely different character. In classic Decentraland fashion, no instructions. So I assume I'm supposed to kill these Newt, what? Okay. Left clicking attacks, hurling a fireball at my enemies. Of course, the performance continues to suffer. There's nearly a one second delay between clicking and launching the projectile. I kill one newt, pick up his eyeball, and get out of there. Completely lost, I cry for help in the chat. But of course, there's no one to hear my screams. Trying the next portal, I'm presented with a warning of a hefty bounty being applied to my head should I choose to enter it. Again, same result as the other portal. Drops from the sky. My view has now been forced into first person, and I'm in a desert. No matter how hard I try to move, my character appears to have become stuck in place. There's no way out of this situation, so I have no choice but to open the menu and choose a different world. Golf Craft. Now, Golf Craft actually starts out with an introduction to the game. While not very detailed, this is miles better than what we've seen before. Now, I know that all of these games are player created, so obviously quality is going to vary, but these were all of the top 10 most popular games. I didn't just pick a random game at the bottom of the list. Now that I've loaded into Golf Craft, I walk straight to this training area. In this training area, I uh, teach myself how to hit a golf ball because there's no detailed tutorials in Decentraland. It's just some controls and figure it out for yourself. At the core, the game only allows you to move your character and then perform this terribly floaty and imprecise jump. When someone goes to build anything on top of that, it's just an uphill battle fighting against a game that already struggles to run in the first place. That's quite a shame because this golf game was actually kind of enjoyable. Uh, the ability to use custom geometry created in Blender did allow for some pretty interesting course designs. After playing a few courses, I realized that this isn't really golf. Uh, it's more of an obstacle course with a golf club based control scheme. There's no traditional golf scoring system, it's just a time limit. So the best strategy is to spam hitting the ball. The positional audio, of course, appears once again, with sounds circling my head as I walk around the course. I am having the most fun that I've had yet in Decentraland, though, which isn't saying much because this is pretty bare bones. 
Again, there's no other active players in this world. Everyone else is AFK, but this is a single player golf game. It does have a high scoreboard though. Now I'm not 100% sure how this golf game is scored, but after playing one complete course, I had one point. Taking a look at the scoreboard though, shows that the top player has tens of thousands of points. I can only imagine that that means that they've played this golf game tens of thousands of times. I would love to stay and golf some more, but I have a job to do here, so we'll go to the meta party. Again, as usual, music is so loud. My Windows volume is set to 8, and I can still barely hear myself think. This is giving me a headache. Besides, I was the only person invited, it seems. Not even the host showed up. Okay, next, Oasis Arcade. Sounds fun. It's a multiplayer dice game of some sort. Well, since the only other player here is AFK, I cannot play this. Continuing to scroll through the list of user-created worlds, I find one called the Spanish Museum. I would expect this to be maybe a recreation of a Spanish history museum with models and descriptions of some famous Spanish landmarks and events throughout history. But, of course not. This is just a museum that displays NFTs with an OpenSea integration. None of them even have anything to do with Spain. Additionally, most of them are broken and they just show this blank image. This is really disappointing because I think building an actual museum in the metaverse would be pretty simple. And it at least could be educational and entertaining. Regardless, we'll try another. Dragon Rush, okay. So, as I said before, the game's engine really isn't designed for real gameplay. As such, the only way to ride the dragon here is by very carefully positioning your character on top of the dragon and then spamming the F key to make it fly. Of course, I fall off of the dragon immediately, and then it continues and continues, clipping into a wall and becoming completely unreachable. I have no idea how to restart it. I don't think there's even a way to restart it, so I'm going to go try a different game now. We'll go ahead and try the second most populated world in the metaverse, the Wondermine crafting game. There's a ton of people here. And by a ton, I mean maybe 50? But regardless, it causes the already low frame rate to plummet to single digits. While there's many other players, none of them respond to my greetings. I'm being ignored in the metaverse. Now this game, if you could even call it that, consists of walking over to rocks on the ground and clicking the mine button. After a brief and laggy animation, you get one unit of currency. This is really the second most popular world in Decentraland, and it's literally a prison labor camp. The players have found out that this is the absolute most effective effort to currency reward, and it's all they're doing. Players are voluntarily doing manual labor inside the metaverse instead of playing one of the many other games that Decentraland offers. The undying greed to generate revenue from every activity seems to be the only draw left for the few remaining Decentraland players. The love and passion and energy in gaming non-existent in Decentraland. The only reason users are still here is to speculate on virtual assets and potentially, but highly unlikely, generate a few cents in revenue through AFK games like this. These people, they don't want to play games for fun. Everything that they do has to have a way to make them money. Otherwise, it's a waste of time. Gaming, for the fun of gaming, is dead in Decentraland. I have time to try just one more game, so I pick a chess-themed one, but the game crashes. This has certainly been one of the games of all time. With nothing more to see in Decentraland, I feel comfortable providing a five point review of the game. Let's begin. Point one, ease of access. Getting into Decentraland couldn't have been easier. I didn't have to create an account or download the game. I could just play directly on my browser and I was able to use my MetaMask wallet for a single sign on authentication. Five out of five points here, no complaints. Point two, the gameplay. Decentraland manages to somehow be less of a playable game than other online social worlds like VRChat or Second Life. The terrible performance, the broken engine, extreme latency, and total lack of instructions failed to provide me any form of entertainment. The game's atrocious. If I could give this a negative score, I would. Decentraland is so far removed from fun that it starts to make me angry. Now, there's some games that make me wish that I could get Alzheimer's disease so I would forget what it was like to play it for the first time. You know, amazing games such as Outer Wilds, the original Dark Souls, or the recent game Tunic. However, the Central Land is on this list for a completely different reason. 
Decentraland is just that bad. Point number three, the graphics. Now, Decentraland has an art style for sure. Uh, as far as the default characters and assets go, the poly count and graphical fidelity of these models is low, but it works, so I'll give it a pass. Now, the ability to import any mesh into the game with no restriction at all allows for some of the most disgusting and uninspired player-created content to be displayed alongside what otherwise would be a passable art style. And given the poor rendering distance and slideshow frame rates, I have to give this a 1 out of 5 because there's no way that this game should perform so poorly with how basic it looks. Point number 4, the value of NFT and crypto technology. In short, there's nothing that Decentraland does that couldn't be done without the blockchain. One, they can use Google or Facebook accounts for single sign-on. Simple, done before, easy. Two, they can use literally any other database system to maintain the marketplace. The Steam Marketplace does it, the World of Warcraft Auction House, among many, many others. Three, they don't have to have any sort of decentralized server system where you have to be voted in on the blockchain to host a server. Just let players host their own server like TF2 or Gary's Mod does. And those games are over a decade old at this point. And fourth, the DAO voting system could be done completely without a blockchain. But that would make it possible for admins to fix bad decisions. Because it's on the blockchain, those votes are autonomously accepted without any human input. And of course, if one individual had 51% of the currency, they would have complete control of the organization, and there's nothing anyone else could do to stop them. So one of the most common arguments for NFTs in video games is that having the NFT of the item is immutable proof that you own that item. This in theory would allow you to move that item to any other game on the blockchain, but that doesn't make any sense. The only reason that an NFT has any meaning in the game is because the game was coded to recognize that token on the blockchain and then assign the appropriate in-game model to that token. There's absolutely nothing stopping the developers from changing how that token is rendered in the game, and there's nothing within the token that inherently demands it has to be displayed as the same model in every game. Not to mention that games have different engines and wouldn't even support a model from another game right out of the box. Right now, you can't take your items from Decentraland and use them in another game. And when Decentraland goes offline for good, all of your NFTs will be completely worthless. Unless another game decides to accept the Decentraland tokens. But why would another game even want to accept the central land tokens? The developer would just be better off inventing their own token where they could then collect revenue directly as they sell it to the players. There's really no value in allowing players to use tokens from other games, even if they accepted a transaction fee. It's just not good business. Now there is one aspect about Decentraland that does benefit from cryptocurrency. Decentraland players may be from all across the world and there's no need to worry about any exchange rate, currency conversions, paying taxes, or obeying sanctions since they just use cryptocurrency for all the transactions. Cryptocurrency allows Decentraland to ignore all regulations regarding consumer protection and providing refunds to players as well. I found an example in the Decentraland Discord where a player experienced a glitch where their plot of land was sold for way less than they intended. An admin then responded telling the player that, well, there's no central Decentraland authority, so you have to write a petition to the DAO and see if they're interested in rolling back that purchase. This unfortunately makes purchasing items in Decentraland unnecessarily risky, and the past 30 years of improvements in consumer protection laws have no grounds in Decentraland. Now, given the quality of the base game here, it becomes pretty obvious that the question behind the game was not, what transaction system will make sense for our social video game? and was instead probably something like, what kind of game can we build on top of this transaction system? With all of these things considered though, I think I can give Decentraland maybe a three out of five in this category. While nothing that Decentraland does is inherently better with the blockchain, it works and I don't have any issues with it outside of that it's a poor choice. The fifth and final point, is it likely that this project will succeed? Clearly Decentraland's already raised millions of dollars, so from a financial perspective, it's already a success for those people that got in early. But two years later, the player counts have fallen tremendously, and money is now leaving the ecosystem faster than it's going in. An educated guess would indicate that the majority of remaining players are simply bag holders who are forcing themselves to play due to their sunk costs. Either that, or they're just bots trying to generate revenue from leaving the game idle 24-7, since a couple of these games pay you just for being in the world. Therefore, I do not expect the Central Ant to ever have another surge in popularity and the game's going to just continue to fall apart slowly until it completely shuts down. In conclusion, Decentraland's already dead, just waiting to be buried. One out of five.
The current state of Decentraland is the result of an overhyped project that capitalized on the massive surge in metaverse popularity a few years ago. The core idea behind the game has been proven to work in examples such as Roblox or VRChat, but Decentraland somehow fails to attract the audience either of those games do. Decentraland has now been in development for over five years at this point, and it still manages to look and feel like a game that was put together in just a few weeks. I'm sad to say that the first game that we've covered on this series has been nothing more than a disappointment. However, my hopes for the future have yet to be crushed, so I'll continue forward with an open mind and we can explore the rest of these games together. We have to take one step back to take 10 steps forward. Thank you all for sticking with me until the end of the video. I know it was really hard, but hopefully this is the last time you'll see Decentraland. Please feel free to vomit if needed, and make sure to subscribe and like the video on the way out. As always, suggestions for games to cover in the series are highly encouraged in the comments. I will try my best to play every game you suggest. I have plans to expand this series so much farther than just the 10 games on this list, so please make sure that you have notifications enabled so you don't miss an upload. I'm John, and thanks again for watching. Goodbye.